That's a good time. Praise God indeed for that feast that you have given us. And uh, we've got some questions coming in, but uh, we, we want to say, first of all, thank you so much for the, the wealth of biblical understanding, insight, a practical application. That, that's some of the comments that have been coming up. You know, the, the teaching is so deep and full of insight, full of health and, and so practical. And uh, it, it's a message that we're, we're not hearing in, in other places, really, because I think it's born out of your years of experience. So we thank you so much for that. We've got three questions come in so far. Do keep them rolling. And Jasmine is, is writing them down. If you're, We've got a, a dozen and a, a half people in the room, all socially distanced here. If you want to write your questions down and just give them to Jasmine, too, that would be great. So here's the first question, Cecil. How do we minister healing to unbelievers? Well, they're the easiest to get healed many times because if they're willing to let you pray for them, then you're just mainly dealing with the will in the beginning. But if they're willing, in fact, I've, um, just to kind of give you a little um, example, uh, I'll say this. Um, I know of a, um, those that have uh, just simply put up a sign in a park saying, and a chair sitting out there saying, prayer. If you would like to have prayer, for, you know, if you, you know, and people come over to them, a person that comes to you is willing, or if you're going to approach someone, then you can't force your will on them. If they're willing, then they're the easiest to pray for because you, uh, the Holy Spirit loves to show Jesus to unbelievers. And so if they're willing, then you, you take the authority upon you. It's not, you don't have to minister the word of God to them to see, are you really believing? Look, they're an unbeliever. You get them healed. You show Jesus. Let the Holy Spirit work through you to reveal Jesus and the goodness of God to them. And man, they, when they experience the goodness of God, say, okay, you want to receive Jesus now, the one that just healed you, the one that loves you. And, and I mean, many times, oh, they're just so open after experiencing the goodness of God. They're so open, just come right in, right into salvation. And I believe this year, this is the beginning. I believe we're going to see more people saved. I've, I heard that at the beginning of the year. This is a year where I believe we'll prepare our hearts because if you'll prepare your heart, the Lord's going to put you in situations, going to bring people to you. I mean, it light is going to shine. Even as the darkness gets dark, the light's going to shine and God is going to put you in places and you're going to lead people to the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Amen. That is good. Uh, and uh, sort of going, you, you mentioned there that it can be easier to pray for unbelievers, <laughs> non-Christians uh, than, uh, than Christians. I mean, because that relates to a question here. How do we minister to a Christian who doesn't believe that we are healed? Well, it all depends, on, again, their willingness, because we can't force our will on people. But... Um, but you can pray for a person. You can pray for the Lord to work through you supernaturally to where your faith can be dominant to, in a situation to where like a gift, it is an example. A, a gift is like Christmas. You know, it's something that bypasses our hearts, not about believing. You can believe that and um, begin to um, minister where the person God's going to use because if it's a situation like, let's say a family member, sometimes family members can be difficult to minister to if they look at you and say, I used to change your diapers. Who do you think you are? In other words, they establish this human judgment, but God can also work through others. I've seen that many times where I've worked in situations. In fact, I just led a young man to the Lord that was um, in a bondage, sexual bondage, um, and uh, he was about to die from the disease from that sexual bondage that he was in. And you probably know the kind of sexual bondage I'm talking about where one male with another male, but, uh, but you know what? The Lord used me in that situation. He accepted Jesus. About, and uh, and I mean, you know what? He's in heaven right now. Praise God. So God can supernaturally, I mean, the reason I'm sharing that is because you see the sister, the family in that situation, he wouldn't open up to them. But, but he opened his heart to me. God, there was grace. I mean, I knew if I spoke to him, he was going to get saved. I knew that. 
And so there's times that you can hear and follow with the direction, direction of the Holy Spirit and get wonderful results in situations. We just can't manipulate and control people. You can sow, sometimes we sow seeds and sometimes we reap the harvest. Amen. So there's times when it comes to ministering people, you can sow a seed and pray for them and the Holy Spirit work in their hearts. So they, can't, they can't forget what you said. It's like it doesn't leave. And then you pray, the Holy Spirit waters that truth and their heart can open up. Amen. But I suppose it's good not to get into an argument with people because that's not the right atmosphere for healing, is it? Yeah, if you win an argument, you'll still lose. <laughs> yeah. You win the heart of the person. It was an intellectual argument. Okay, here's another related question. How do we minister to a person who believes they are healed, but they are not seeing the manifestation? Then stay with the, go right back into the teaching I just did. And just simply stay with the process until you experience the Holy Spirit. And when you experience the Holy Spirit in the process of receiving the word working in your heart, look, you'll change. Yeah. And you will experience the manifestation. You just, you just refuse to move from the place of Christ that, no, I am healed. I am free. And when your heart can back up at your mouth is saying, You'll really believe it. You're fully persuaded. You're fully convinced. And you experience the Holy Spirit to the point that it's not just something you're saying intellectually, but you're letting the Holy Spirit be your teacher. You're experiencing him as your helper. Then let me tell you, you will open up. You will receive. Praise Amen. God. Amen. I think that the, the next question is asking you to make an observation uh, rather than a judgment. Uh, why do many good pastors and ministers not understand these issues? Look, there's a time that I didn't have the understanding I do today, and I haven't arrived. If I ever come to a place that I feel like I know everything, then I'll rely upon myself instead of relying upon the Lord and rely upon the Holy Spirit as my teacher. And so everybody starts somewhere, and we always operate on the knowledge we have at the time. And so it just simply, it's re different for every different person. Why? But, um, but that's just life. Mm -hmm. It is. I think you probably touched on this one. Oh, Jasmine's pointing me to this one uh, that somebody's asking, does the book, your book, Issues of the Heart, go deeper into what you've been uh, talking about this afternoon? The issues of the heart are more relational, but those truths can, can be beneficial for your heart when there's, yes, there's strong issues of unbelief. It's where we've become the problem and... I've had, oh, I tell you, it's, that teaching has uh, came out of me and changed that came in me. And I've had people come up and tell me the same thing I experienced, they've experienced in the area of the judgments of the heart and the freedom because the process it took where they were so extreme in, in an area of life and, and the freedom they experienced and, oh, my, the blessing it has been to them. So the book, I believe it'll benefit you, uh, benefit you yes. It, it has a unique take. I think many of us who were sort of trained as Christian ministers are always uh, encouraged to ask the question, why? why? Why are you sick? Why have you got a backache? Whereas you really turn that on its head. And as you explained earlier, that question, why, only focuses it back on ourselves, where is really our focus should always be on, on Jesus. So it, it, you have a unique perspective in, in that book. And we would encourage people to to benefit from it. We, we've heard many a testimony of people saying, wow, that changed my, my thinking, my approach, my relationships with, with, with other people. Yeah. Yes. Let me add and say, there's, there's a proper way to judge and then there's a wrong way to judge. And that book is talking about the wrong type of judging. There's a healthy judgment that is very, very healthy where it's not about us, it's about Jesus, to where it's lining up with the word of God, where we're, where, and, but, but there's no condemnation towards us or we're not critical, judgmental towards others. But there's an unhealthy form of judgment to where we, it affects our self-worth uh, with other people, and then, then it affects the way we relate to them in an unhealthy way. And those truths that you're talking about, yes, they can practically uh, go across the line to other areas of life like healing. Man. Uh, there was a question that came up earlier what about when we only see a partial healing we perhaps prayed for somebody and they've got a little bit better um, but they've not seen the full manifestation of it and you might have touched on that already in a, in 
in a different answer, but how would you answer that one? Um, they then uh, they still need to identify with being free and they need to stay with no, I'm free. No, every bit of it's going, no, you're not staying in my body. You don't move from Jesus. You don't move from truth found on the cross. You don't move from that. No matter what you're experiencing, you, you find truth in Jesus. You don't look at your circumstances, whether it's partial this and go, well, I've only got this. It's partial. That's a human perspective. Uh, uh-uh. you don't move from being free. I'm free. And when your heart fully backs that up, then you are. So instead of going, why, as we're talking about, why am I only partially healed? The moment you do that, you're not identifying with Jesus. You're not looking to Jesus. You're not identifying with the cross. You're making receiving it that's you, and you will empower the problem. You'll become a partial person. That's part. You become a person partially healed. Sorry. That's a better way of saying it. Well, yes. <laughs> well you might have been right the first time. <laughs> But uh, no, we, we know what you mean. The, um, and I, I forgot what I was going to say in there then, um, because it's the focus on ourselves again, isn't it? it, it's, it's, it and and I know, this is what I was going to say. It is so easy because our senses speak, scream at us so loudly, don't they? Whereas we talk about the Holy Spirit being a still, small voice, uh, our our emotions when we're in pain when we're in agony or anxiety that is screaming at us so loudly mm. yes and the motions when you feel something emotionally to the um, then it's like that's on the inside of you you how you feel or words that you perceive that's with it's on the inside of you and when something's on the inside of you we have the tendency to identify with it and own it quicker because you feel it but still it's not what's in your spirit and it's like no that's my soul lying to me. That's me identifying with the problem. You've got to tell your heart what the truth is. You've got to find truth in Jesus and just refuse to move from Jesus. So yeah. nope, that's a lie. That is not true found in Christ. Uh, that's very good. And I think that's going to answer the next question here as well. Should we accept it as God's will if we do not yet uh, not do not get healed? Or would it be unbelief on our part? Well, sometimes if you ask the wrong question, you get the wrong answer. <laughs> and you never move from the cross. Like I said earlier, you never accept to say, I'm not healed. You never allow that type of thinking. You never identify with failure. You, ne you never allow yourself to go there. You go back to no. It may be temporarily what I'm experiencing, but no, uh-uh. Truth is found in Jesus. If, if we, if, if bad is not temporary, then we're going to identify with bad as being permanent. And when we identify with bad as being permanent, then the goodness of God is always temporary. And when you experience the goodness of God, whether it's through prayer through another person, or even God does something directly in your life, even another area of life or whatever, if you've got, if, if good is temporary, then you know what, the, and bad's permanent, then You'll appreciate what God did, but deep within your heart, there'll be this fear. Fear from the Hebrew language is an expectation of bad. There's this expectation that bad's coming back, and it's deep within your heart. It's like the, the lady I mentioned the other day with condemnation. When you live with feeling low self-worth, feeling judged, feeling condemned, feeling like you're inferior, like you lack something, like you don't have something, all these different human perspectives all coming from condemnation, when that becomes a way of life for you, then it affects the way, even you experience good, it affects the good, you, because you relate to good long, uh, wrong, you don't identify with good. I think as Christians, we're supposed to become the goodness of God, we're supposed to identify our good to the one that it, it belongs to us. Jesus, you paid a terrible price to give it to me. I refuse to identify with that. I refuse to own bad. When bad manifests its life, in fact, let me use an example, a financial example of a pastor I know that, um, um, boy, the finances are so real to him. I mean, when he got saved, he got wonderfully saved. I mean, he was in gangs. He was on the street. He was a rough character. If he needed money, he just went and mugged somebody. And so, I mean, this is a guy that when he got saved, it was real to the point that um, he went to mug somebody after being a Christian because he needed some money. And the Lord spoke to him and stopped him. And he thought, Jesus, what have you done, man? It's, I'm being a man. This is being a man. It's like, but look, today, the word of God working in his heart, he's a pastor. He's done not any different. But you see, 
he experienced a financial situation with a government where he went into the government offices and they said, you owe this money. He said, no, I don't. They looked, he said, you look it up, look at the computer said, here it is right here, sir, print it out. See right here, this is what you owe. No, I don't. You go back and check it again. People piling up behind him in the queue, just lots of people. And it's just like, no, go back, look and say, okay. And they went back, see, see, I told you, see, print it out. See right here, you owe this money. No, I don't. You go back and look again. Man, that government person said, look at all those people behind you. It says, you're holding, and everybody's getting upset at him. And it's like, you're holding up, the, you know, it's like, look, look, you do owe it. He said, no, you go back and look again. I do not owe this. And the man said, I'm doing this one last time, da 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 da, da and print it out. And all of a sudden, it's a shocked look on this man's face. He said, you know what? You don't owe it. In fact, we owe you money. In fact, <laughs> we're going to have to pay you in two different checks. <laughs> Is that Okay. <laughs> Let me tell you, there's not many people that can operate that effectively under pressure and not allow the self-consciousness of what it's affecting other people's opinion, plus what's coming out of the mouth of that man, his form of communication, to get your focus on those behind you, get your focus on, let go of this. Look, here's the proof. Hmm. That's an example of a person effectively operating under pressure that refused to move from what he knows is the truth. Amen. I, I saw something flash up there, but, but we are taking note of all your questions. Don't worry if we uh, haven't taken them in the order that they appeared. It's because we're sort of putting them thematically uh, to make a, a kind of logic to it. But somebody just put up there that they'd once heard that the only barrier uh, to, um, what was it? The only barrier to healing is a belief that there is a barrier to healing. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> probably don't need to say any more about that that makes its own comment here's a, a a deeper one how or perhaps it's not a deeper one how do we minister to those with mental health issues which cloud their mind and and their thinking and it says do we minister using god's word first as per romans 12 2 the renewal of the mind okay um, I'll use the example of two different people I prayed for in the area of hearing voices. One was a grandmother who had been hearing voices ever since she'd been a child. And it was so extreme that when her sister came up in the altar call, she said, will you pray, will you pray for my sister who's hearing voices? And she said, our brother passed away, so I think it was like six weeks ago, and we were out shopping today, and my sister's still talking to our brother like he's still alive. In other words, not normal. Her brain isn't normal. And so, and she's hearing these voices and, and she believes it's God. In fact, the sister that needed the prayer followed the sister up and the other sister went and sat down. And so here I am in the altar call now praying for the sister or getting ready to minister to the sister who's hearing voices. And I cannot reach her with understanding because it's like her human judgment is just like, no, that's God. That's all these strange, weird things. That's God. God telling me to do this, that's strange and weird and all this stuff, you know, to another person with a br normal brain, then it's like, obviously, no, there's a problem here. But the person with a problem, their own brain has the problem. And so obviously you can't reach them with understanding. So if the person is willing to let you pray, that's enough. With your faith being dominant in that situation, believe for a gift, but you know what? speak. And let me say this, by the way, there's a lot of people that, uh, and I'm going to add this, a lot of people believe that when you're dealing with people hearing voices and things of this nature, that it's a demonic spirit. They have a demonic stronghold. But look, sometimes it is, but when it is, those can be the easier ones to deal with. I mean, you take a throw of the spirit, they shut up. I've done that as well. But in this situation with this lady that I'm using as an example, it was just a healing in the brain. There's no demonic manifestation. You may think those, the way she's talking is demonic, but you see a person whose brain isn't functioning correctly, has wrong reasoning and, and, and such isn't working right. She could, it could be a stronghold in the context of giving place to the devil, as Paul the Apostle says not in Ephesians, not to give place to the devil. So, I mean, naturally it could be a stronghold, but the fact is this though, there was no demonic manifestation. I just put my head on her head. And when I did, it's like a little boy I prayed for with autism, the same example. Look, when I put my hand on his head, he look, his brain wasn't working right. He can't understand physical touch. It's like, why do you have your hand on my head? He just feels something and he pushed my hand away. That's not a devil. There's no demonic manifestation. I just put gently put my hand back. 
And he, of course, within three days, his mother's calling me on the phone and he's talking to her for the first time. The, the mother that um, with the um, um, a grandmother hearing voices, look, I released the power of God for her brain to be whole. And she came back the next night to the next meeting. I saw her come to the back doors as people were coming in before the service started. I took off straight towards her. I said, are you still hearing voices? And she said, no. She said, the voices stopped. And she said, not only that, I had a dream last night. In the dream, it was my brother. He told me the dead don't come back and talk to the living. And he gave me a scripture reference out of the Bible. I mean, that's just God. That was supernatural. That was probably an angel or something or some supernatural experience that she interpreted. But the fact is this, though. Um, a year later, we're back in that church. She wouldn't stop hugging my wife. She's been free a year. And now with a proper brain functioning perfectly and correctly, it's like, Oh, she was so happy to be free before you can tell her she had a problem. So I'm just going to say this, uh, that you got to pray for something that extreme as a ministry can challenge your heart. You can become part of the problem because you can empower the problem by, mag oh, it's a spirit or it's this or it's that, or, or you, can, you can feel inaccuracy. Look, um, it's beneficial to establish your heart with understanding uh, in the area of praying for the sick, especially if you're a novice just starting out so that you don't do stupid things and hurt people and offend people. I mean, it's wisdom to relate and love correctly and have people's permission as an example, praying for them and, and to properly relate gently um, without uh, coming across in a way where you offend and you hurt people and things of this nature. It's, it's, that's wisdom. But as a minister, though, you never have respect for physical problems. You never take physical problems and make them greater than Jesus, his body, and his blood. And you never empower a problem to believe. And if, if you're being challenged, look, you're being challenged. It's okay. There's no condemnation. Practice and just refuse to, and just, just keep yielding your heart to the point that you don't become part of the problem in that situation, to the point that you refuse to look at the problem. I look, there was a time I didn't see these things happen. There was a time that these kind of problems as a minister, like I told, I mentioned in the beginning, as we were talking way back in the beginning, if we have some questions, how did you start out in the healing ministry? Look, there were times I experienced failure in praying for people like this. In other words, I was part of the problem. I needed to change. And, and the danger was as a young minister, if I would form a judgment on why, and then if I put the word of God into get and it, it, try to connect the word of God in a way it doesn't connect to try to reason out to make them responsible instead of me, if myself or those in myself. But when we can come to the place that go, the word say, okay, Jesus, okay, I'm the problem. Lord, change me. I'm going to listen. I want wisdom. I need answers for the benefit of other people. That's very unselfish. That's a good thing to change so that Jesus can work through us more powerfully, more effectively. It's okay. We don't have to perform in front of people and look how important I am. And to the point that, well, like one minister with this young girl that was just newly saved and she came up in tears in the altar call when I went to pray for her because she said there was a minister that prayed for her and she had serious physical deformities. She only needed some healing. She needed a creative miracle. And that young lady had a minister say this to her. Well, you just don't have enough faith in front of everyone, making her responsible. And she walked away feeling that there was something wrong with her. There was something, everyone else had something she didn't. That was a lie. And I ministered the word of God in such a way that it set her free during the meeting. When she came up for prayer, she was in tears because that issue had been resolved within her heart to the point that it was just like, she, you know, to, you know, and she had confidence to come up for prayer. Whereas before, she, fear kept her from coming up because there's something wrong with me. But she came up for prayer to me because she knew I wouldn't hurt her. Amen. Amen. Here's a, an associated question with that. Is it just unbelief that causes delay to physical manifestation of, of healing? You know, it, I'll just go back and say this. Um, ask the Lord for wisdom. And um, in fact, just say, okay, this is the experience. But instead of asking him a specific question, a specific way, just ask for wisdom. Let him speak to you what you need to hear instead of what you think you need to hear. Very good. 
Uh, here's an interesting question that I haven't heard of before. Is it okay to ask God to bypass our hearts if we're struggling to receive? Well, any anything you experience something is good, and it's and it's you know experiences the goodness of God. But again, if the issues of unbelief on the inside of you are serious, there's a danger you'll give it away through unbelief. If the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, especially if it's like taking candy from a baby. Go look at Matthew chapter 13, the sower sowing the seed. And that first example is like a baby, so to speak. In other words, it's the seed just sits on the top of the soil. You're better off with the word working in your heart and come into a place where you have a good and noble heart. You're better off going through that process to the point that good belongs to you because of Jesus. You're just better off in, in that area. But any of the good you experience is good. It's not nothing wrong with it. Amen. If God wants to give you something, receive it. Amen, amen, amen. Um, how do you counsel people to their identity in Christ and to work in that identity when presenting presented with uh, demonic manifestations at the time of ministering to them, ensuring that their condition's not worse. I can't remember. Uh, bringing, more evil spirits. bringing more evil spirits. Okay, could you repeat that one more time so I get the fullness of what you're saying? Yeah, I, I'm not sure that I can't grasp it myself. How do you counsel people to that identity in Christ? Uh, when there is a demonic manifestation at the time of ministering to them. I think that that's the crux of it. Okay, I think, yeah, I'll follow you now. Thank you. Um, look, um, if they're dealing with the spirit, then um, deal with the spirit, take authority of the spirit. When, um, many, many times in situations, in fact, go back to, I think, um, what is it, Mark 9 or Matthew 9, there were Jesus and the, and the child, the boy that was manifesting and they ministered to the father. Look, People started running from everywhere, and Jesus, at that point, he stopped ministering the Father and just turned around and whoop, got that boy set free, the spirit out of that boy. Look, dealing with spirits doesn't have to be hard unless within your heart you're empowering them, and you're offering them a place where you expect bad, you expect a battle and such, and they know your heart. They're not stupid. They've been, you know, if, if you watch one person all their lifetime, it didn't matter what they say they believe. You see how they live and relate to life. You would find out what's truly within their heart. Democrim is not stupid, but when it comes to your authority in Christ, it's like, uh-uh. It's like you take authority, this is this is changing. So just deal with the spirit, get them free, and then they'll listen to you to you know to your communication with the word of God differently. Yeah, and I think that's the same answer to somebody who's just asked about what if they're unconscious. Um, that can be the easiest situation because their will isn't fighting against you, is it? Or their unbelief isn't fighting against you. Oh, yeah. Same as praying for a baby or praying for an animal. I've got many animals healed. And I mean, I haven't had a dog yet that's looked at me with unbelief. So the only time I can't pray for a dog is like this dog that was so abused, he wouldn't let me touch him because he was so afraid of me. He's been beat so much that he looked like he wanted to sink into the ground. He, he dearly wanted me to pet him, but he was afraid if I touched him, he was going to get hurt because he had been abused by someone. That's the only time you have trouble praying for an animal in that context. But I've gotten dogs healed, cat, you know, um, those are the most common horses. You know, right here in Colorado, miniature horses, one of them with their hips locked. And you know, the thing, unique thing about animals, animals never lose their healing. Only humans lose their healing because only a human can choose by an act of their will not to trust God. An animal can't get healed on their own. It takes a human to get them healed. An animal can't lose it on their own. Mm -hmm. So that leads us nicely into this next question, that realizing that sometimes we are the problem. Um, when, you, when people realize that they are the problem, how do we help them to move on and grow rather than keep falling back to being the problem? Well, again, it goes back to my teaching and their willingness to... Um, get into the truth of the word of God that they need to hear for the particular issues that are within their heart and stay with that truth and experience the Holy Spirit over time. And again, Joshua 1.8 and what God told Joshua, and it was a lifetime. You're going to be successful and prosper over a lifetime if you'll do this daily. 
if you do this consistently. So it's the consistency of the word of God, but not just the intellect, experiencing the Holy Spirit as our teacher to where you put into practice the word. You begin to walk it out and experience the help of the Holy Spirit in that process to, to the point that you take on the identity of that truth. You become that truth. That is a process that takes time. It's a willingness of the person to choose Jesus daily over themselves. Let him be Lord. Amen. Not just Savior. Amen. Very good. Here's one that's just come in. Is it okay to walk away from a person or a situation that requires healing? Well, walking away from a person, there can be situations where um, it's not time to pray. It's more detrimental to pray for them uh, because, um, um, you know, they're either uh, either there's issues or attitudes or things of that nature, you know, but there's other times where, um, it, you know, I, I can use the example of a man I prayed for that he said this to me, he said, I had five, and he named every one well-known minister. If I named them all, you probably know them. They're all well-known ministers in the body of Christ, you know, that's out on television. Personally, he's had all five of those ministers pray for him. He said this to me, not all one of them could get me healed. Now, here I'm going to pray for him. How would that make you think if Andrew was one, happened to be one of them, and if I happened to be one of them, whoever else you want to pick happened to be one of them, and you name five different well-known people that get results, and not one of them get you healed. What would you think if you're the next one in line to pray for them? It's like, well, them I know. Who am I? And you make it about you. Look, I've learned this in ministry um, you can't trust what that person saying. If I watched those ministers minister to him, I'd have a totally different perspective about that situation than he would. He's got some serious, he had an attitude. He had some serious issues of unbelief. And this just flew out of my mouth by the spirit of God. I said, okay, after he said all this stuff and went into all these different details, I'm not going to take time to share. I said this, okay, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to get you healed. Then I dealt with his attitude. It took about 45 minutes for him to humble his heart. Because of that attitude, the moment he did, at that moment, I released the power of God. Wham, it was the first time there was prayer and physical freedom came, and he had two different issues. And um, anyway, but the sad thing was two weeks later, he called back. He said, God didn't do a thing. <laughs> it's like he let those problems come back because he didn't, he didn't get, do what I said. He didn't get into the word for the benefit of his heart and allow his heart to change to the point that, again, he had an attitude. It was a way of life for him. So there's just different situations with different people. There's times that, um, you know, it's times that you pray first. There's times that um, because of, like, for instance, a person with an attitude, you know, a person, and, and it depends. If, if God speaks to you and tells you to do something, do what he says. It's going to be powerful what you can experience. That's what I experienced. But the second time ministering to him, you know what? I might do something totally different. Totally ministering to completely differently. I tell you, you just can't be rigid as a minister. You're flexible. You flow. You listen. You're not there to perform. Amen. And I think that probably is going to be the, the answer to the next question as well, because it's all out of our relationship with the Lord and listening to what the Holy Spirit says in the situation. So how do you minister to someone who's experienced severe childhood trauma, uh, like sexual abuse? Okay. Then, um, again, you go through the process of your self-worth being established in Christ and Lord healing your heart, because a slave mentality in this context then um, if you've gone through that type of abuse, then you feel violated, that you're dealing with low self-worth in these areas because of uh, what you went through, the shame of the situation. So over time, that happens since you were a child, you're no longer a child. It's all the different types of beliefs and, re and relationship to life that you've established within your heart over time from a human perspective, from that shame, the guilt, the condemned, you know, all these different types of anger, the hurt, the pain, all these different things. So um, allow the Lord to heal your heart and to set you free to the point that getting into the word of God gets easy, not hard. And so the same anointing that'll heal you physically. Look, I pray for many people and the Lord can heal your heart. He can take away the hurt and the pain. Then it's easier for the word of God to open up because when you approach and listen to the word of God, now there's a humility of heart instead of extreme hurt, pain, anger. 
Amen. That's a real Amen. quick answer. It's a lot more I could say. Well, that's right, but that that touches it adequately. I think we'll call a halt on any more questions, uh, but just ask you a, a couple more that we, we, we've gathered. Uh, so uh, call a halt. No more questions, please. You, you, you given us wonderful questions um, but here's someone saying uh, that they're, they're looking for, for healing uh, from a, a disability but their disability allows them government support um, if they continue to receive that government support does that show a lack of faith that they're going to be healed I'll say this back and say this um, there's no difference between that situ circumstance or situation than a person that asked me the question, um, should I take the medication the doctor has given me and stay on this medication? Am I not trusting God to take this medication? It's really no difference between the questions other than just the semantics of the question. So what, what I will say is, is this, um, just make it a small thing. Don't even go there. If the Lord tells you not to do something, then fine, don't do it. Uh, don't take it. But um, but on medication as a minister, I'll never tell a person stop taking that medication. You're not in faith. I'll never say that to them. That's something Jesus, you need to hear from Jesus. He needs to speak to you directly because when you hear his voice and do what he says, you'll get his results and such. But uh, for the benefit of your heart, just ignore it. Take, stop making that a big deal. Put your focus on Jesus and don't go anywhere that takes your, makes you take your eyes off of Jesus. Amen. Now, look, when you don't need the medication, when you don't need the government support, then you can give it back to them. It's like, hey, I'm free. I don't need this. You know, you can be blessed to give it back. So just make it a small thing. Don't get your self-worth based upon, am I doing something wrong? Should I do this? Look, just, just make it simple. Just get your eyes on Jesus. Everything else will come in line. Amen. Keep it simple. Don't make it complicated. Keep it simple, saints. Is <laughs> good. <laughs> So uh, a couple of questions perhaps that directed me. Can we listen to the recording of this again? Yes, you may. We have recorded the whole thing. Uh, uh, Jasmine will put into the chat my email address. Just send us an email if you want the audio recording. The video recording will be too large to distribute to you. But if you want the audio of this, andrew.sharp at awme.net. Then where do we buy the book? Well, as we mentioned at the beginning, you can go to clpmi.org and order it there. Or you can um, contact uh, me again if you're in the UK or the Republic of Ireland or, or Europe, and we can send you uh, the books out from, from here. Um, so what was it? £15 pounds for... Fifteen pounds for how to receive your healing from God. Twelve pounds for issues of the heart, and seven pounds for how to minister the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And if you come to me, uh, you can get that for thirty pounds. Uh, all free books for thirty pounds uh, on that. There might not be the same bargain if you go to CLPMI, <laughs> but uh, that is a, a one day special. So, um, uh, amen, amen. Yes, so, sir, don't allow us the ability to, to make those kind of decisions because everything is all set. Yeah, that's right. But normally, at an event like this, Cecil makes some special offer. So, that will be it for today so thank you we cannot thank you enough Cecil for sparing your time and giving us such a, a, a rich feast to to meditate on I mean yes it will be well worth going over that teaching again or buying the books and there's also audio teachings that are available uh, on on clpmi.org uh, as as well so uh Cecil, just pray for us at the beginning, at the, at the beginning, at the end, <laughs> at the beginning of the rest of our life, I suppose. <laughs> pray, pray, pray for us at the beginning of the rest of our life. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you, brother. It's very kind. 
Well, we just give you glory and honor and praise, Lord Jesus. And I just thank you for all those that now that are opening their hearts to you, Lord. I just thank you for the great grace of being released to them and able to build your Holy Spirit that's fulfilling the very desires of their heart, Lord. I thank you uniquely for each individual, how you can perfect that which concerns them, that, Lord, how you're going to work within them, the truth that's Holy Spirit that's going to be opened up to them. And, Lord, I just thank you that you're healing people's hearts right now that you're taking away the hurt and the pain. I just command right now with the authority you've given us, Lord Jesus, to be whole. All that pain just to go right now, the hurt, the shame. I loose people from bondages in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and just give you the glory, Jesus, that supernatural peace right now, starting at the top of their heads, is going right down through their bodies. Peace. Peace that passes all understanding, protecting, guarding the heart and the mind. The very two areas that need to be protected, Lord Jesus, so from that place of peace, Lord, they can hear your voice. They can be led by your spirit. They can hear your voice over their voice. Great grace being released right now. And I just rebuke physical infirmities and I command their bodies to be whole in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Now be whole in Jesus' name. Infirmities, go in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Go now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, those of you Right now, that you're feeling those problems leaving, you're free. You're going to get better and better and better. I mean, there, I can feel an anointing. I, I believe right this moment, and let me tell you, the Holy Spirit's not limited to that distance. It's the same as if I had my hand directly on you right now. Power is being released right into your body. The life of Christ is working powerfully on the inside of you right now. You're free. You're going to get better and better and better because you're healed. We just give you the glory, Lord Jesus your power, your virtue, your anointing. And I just feel it increasing. It's getting stronger. And I, they, I believe there's some people right now that are receiving. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And if you would, just bring, come forth with the testimonies. Let, let, let Andrew and Jasmine, let them know. I mean, it, it could, because through this method of the computer, you know, of course, you can't interact the same way. But uh, boy, let, let, you know, let us know. That would be wonderful just to hear your testimonies of what the Lord's doing in your life right now, whatever area is working in you. So we just give you the glory, Lord Jesus, and praise in Jesus' name. We give you glory and thank you. Praise God. Amen and amen. Thank you so much. The emails are coming in already, Cecil. So <laughs> but yes, do, do send your testimonies of how you've been blessed. You're so right that that anointing we've been sensing, somebody here said that they were aware are being ministered to as you were speaking earlier on and the Holy Spirit just uh, uh, upon them and uh, they thought they were going to sleep. But in fact, it was the, the peace of the Holy Spirit ministering oh, to them. Amen. So testimonies, uh, if you want the audio recording, if you want to order a book, andrew.sharp at awe, awme net. It's been great having Karis Belfast, Karis Exeter and Karis Walsall with us too, and guests from around the world. It's been great having you with us. If you'd like to know more about Karis Bible uh, College in the UK and the Republic of Ireland, you can just Google Karis Belfast, Karis Walsall, Karis Exeter or Karis Dumfries and you'll find more information about us then. But thank you again, Cecil. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, we are blessed to be a blessing. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God.